Samuel Adams believed that the American colonists had a right to elect their own government officials. After writing essays and articles, which were published in the newspaper, Adams formed the country party. He and his members opposed all the tax laws. Adams organized a group called the Sons of Liberty, who resisted the tea tax by secretly dumping tea into Boston Harbor. Thinking he should be expanded in his cause, Samuel made his case for independence to John Adams, who was his second cousin, and John Hancock, who was a wealthy merchant. Samuel's belief in independence from Britain and his successful efforts to persuade others to support that cause earned him great respect. He has been called the father of the American Revolution. What was the Boston Tea Party? On Monday morning on the 29th of November in 1773, a handbill was posted all over Boston containing the following words. Friends, brethren, countrymen, that worst of plagues, the detested tea, shipped from this port by the East India Company, has now arrived in our harbor. The Boston Tea Party was basically a political protest, and it was conducted by the Sons of Liberty in Boston, in a town of the British colony of Massachusetts, against the British government and the monolithic East India Company that controlled all the tea imported into the colonies. On December 16, 1773, after officials in Boston refused to return the three shiploads of tax tea to Britain, a group of colonists boarded the ships and destroyed the tea by throwing it into the Boston Harbor. The incident remains an iconic event in American history, and many other political protests often refer to it. The Tea Party was an accumulation of a resistance movement throughout British America against the Tea Act which had been passed by the British Parliament in 1773. Colonists objected to the Tea Act for a variety of reasons, especially because they believe it violated their right to be taxed only by their own elected representatives. Protesters had successfully prevented the unloading of tax tea in three other colonies, but in Boston, embattled by the Royal Governor Thomas Hutchinson, refused to allow the tea to be returned to Britain. He apparently did not expect that the protesters would choose to destroy the tea, rather than concede to the authority of the legislator in which they were not directly represented. The Boston Tea Party was a key event in the growth of the American Revolution. Parliament responded in 1774 with the Cohesive Acts, which, among other provisions, closed Boston's commerce until the British East India Company had been repaid for the destroyed tea. Colonists in turn responded to the cohesive acts with additional acts of protests, and by the convening of the First Continental Congress, which petitioned the British monarch for repeal of the acts and coordinated colonial resistance to them. The crisis escalated, and the American Revolutionary War began near Boston in 1775. There is an account of the Boston Tea Party, which was taken verbatim from the Boston Evening Post. This was made by an impartial observer who happened upon the tea party. He accidentally arrived in Boston upon a visit with a friend, and that evening on the 29th of November, out of curiosity and the passing invitations of a most honest friend, attended the meeting. He said, I must confess that I was most agreeably, and I hope that I shall be forgiven by the people if I say so unexpectedly entertained and instructed by the regular, reasonable, and sensible conduct and expression of the people there collected, that I should rather have entertained an idea of being transported to the British Senate that to an adventurous and a wonderful assembly of people of a remote colony were I not convinced by the genuine and uncorrupted integrity and the manly hardihood of the rhetoricians of that assembly that they were not yet corrupted or debauched by luxury. And this tells us a lot about these men who protest at the Boston Tea Party. They were men not yet corrupted by the government or the political system. These men, Samuel Adams, John Hancock, and John Adams, were truly sons of liberty.